Lord, we thank you for this day and for this time to come and be with you. And we ask you to come and be with us, Lord. I'm a woman with a dog and a desire to advance your kingdom, Lord. And I pray that you would bless my efforts with Sasha tonight. And I pray that in this experience you would come and show us your glory. We ask this in your name. Amen. I know some of you may be a little put off by having a dog in your church as if it may seem somehow sacrilegious. But if you look in Job chapter 12, verses 7 through 10, we are told that if we want to know who God is, we need to go to the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, and that they will tell us that they know that their lives are in the hands of their Creator. And so I believe that God uses things in the natural realm to try to show us what He is trying to accomplish in the spiritual realm. And so there are two verses that kind of drive what I'm doing here tonight with this little project. Um, the first verse is from John 14:15. Jesus tells us that if we love Him, we will obey His commands. And then in Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven, 37, Jesus tells us that the most important commandment we have is that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And so as I began to train Sasha, God began to convict me that our obedience to Him is a demonstration of our love. To him, And as I began to train her, I began to learn that I didn't love and obey as well as I thought I did. So we're going to talk a little bit tonight about the connection between love and obedience. And how do you inspire obedience out of love? And the first thing I can tell you is there's a couple of things you don't do. Um, sorry, we're a little itchy today. We had a bath the other day. So we're just a little bit itchy. But there's a couple of things you don't do if you want to inspire obedience out of love. And that is you don't fear train your puppy. Okay? Because what's going to happen if you fear train your puppy? is that the first thing they're going to do as soon as they get a chance, if you fear train them and, you, and they get a chance to get away from you, they're going to go. And they're probably not going to look back or come back. Because who would want to? We don't like being around us. We don't like to be around people who try to intimidate us or boss us around. So you don't want to fear train your puppy. The other thing you don't want to do is you don't want to treat train your puppy either. Now some of you are looking at me well, about that, and you're looking at each other. Jesus wants you to love Him for Him, not for what He can give you or do for you. You want your puppy, you want your children to love you for you. See, if you treat, train your puppy, there's always going to be somebody somewhere who's got a bigger, better treat. And if all your puppy loves is the treat, guess where they're going to go? They're going to go to the treat. And they're not going to stay with you. So you want that love to be for you and not for the treat. And the first thing I teach a dog, um, so, and, and you also have to watch the example that you said. As I said, when I began training her, I began to be convicted about my own behavior. And I know sometimes we, we say, well, just do as I say, not as I do. Well, see, that doesn't work real well for your puppy because if your puppy sees you chasing cats, killing squirrels, and digging holes, guess what your puppy's going to do? Your puppy's going to chase cats, kill squirrels, and dig holes. And if that's not the kind of puppy you want, you don't need to be that kind of person. So you have to think about that. And that was, I had to think about some things as we trained. Um, one of the first things I teach a dog when I get a dog is to come. We're told in Matthew eleven twenty eight, Come to me, 
all you who are weary, and I will give you rest. When Jesus called his disciples, he very simply said, Come, follow me. And that's what they did. So shortly after I got Sasha, like within the first week, she and I took a trip down to Fort Gaines, Georgia, where some relatives of mine have a farm. I had spent three or four days with her, um, demonstrating to her my commitment to her, but it was time for me to test her commitment to me. I knew she had been in a shelter for about three months. I knew that my house and my yard were kind of small and that she really hadn't had a chance to properly stretch her legs. So I wanted to take her to the farm and just let her run, you know? Just burn off some energy and have a good time. So we went and we got out of the car and we started walking the dirt road through the property and I let, I let her off the leash and we walked a little ways and we got to a wide open field and I'm not sure what she saw but she saw it and she took off and four legs are always faster than two <laughs> and so she got clear across the field before I mean before I could blink I was pretty impressed with her speed and um, she stopped when she got to the wood line and it was a couple of hundred yards and she stopped and she looked back and I thought well this may very well be goodbye I mean because she's a couple of hundred yards away but I thought also this is my moment to test her I've got to see if she'll come to me on her own so I shouted across that field as loud as I could and I threw my arm over my shoulder and I said come and I watched her from a couple hundred yards whip around and come back across that field just as quickly as she had gone the first time. And, the, and she was so overjoyed, I think, that I had said, come, that I had, you know, shouted for her to come to me. And I was as overjoyed to watch her come. And I thought about what God must feel like when we come to Him out of a desire to just be with Him and spend time with Him. There are two very important reasons that Sasha needs to come to me. The first is, she needs to come to me because I am the one with the power to change her life. I am the one who took her out of the cage at PetSmart. And I am the one who takes the leash on and off if she, as she needs it. I want you to think about your own life and the reason that you need to come to Christ is because Jesus Christ is the one with the power to change your life. I don't know what kind of cage you're, you're caught in. I don't know what kind of leash you may be tangled up in. But I do know that Jesus Christ is the one with the power to let you out of that cage. He is the one with the power to untangle your leash. The second reason she needs to come to me is because I didn't get her to just be a yard dog and collect fleas. Okay? I didn't get her to just be a house dog and lay on the sofa. I got her because I'm a professional counselor and I wanted to be able to use her in my office. There's going to come a point in your life, Jesus Christ has not called you to just lay around on His sofa. He has not called you to just be a yard dog and lay around and collect fleas. He has called you for a higher purpose. And there's going to come a point in your life when He calls you and you are going to need to be free to answer that call. The second command I teach after I teach a dog to come is that we learn to sit. Can you stop scratching long enough? Thank you. Um, you'll hear me say please and thank you. You want children and you want a puppy that says please and thank you or ma'am and sir? You need to say please and thank you, ma'am and sir, to your children or to your puppy. Could you sit for me, please? Hmm? Need you to sit, please. Thank you. Very nicely done. Now you can lie down if you want to. Um, 
We're told in Psalm 46.10 to be still and know that I am God. That I will be honored by every nation and I'll be honored throughout the world. Sasha did not necessarily learn sit in the usual way. And the way I usually teach a dog to sit. Come here, can you stand up? Let's show them one more time. Come on. Goodness. <laughs> Usually what I'll do is I'll, I'll stand her in front of me and I'll put a little pressure on the hip joints and that kind of weakens the knees and they bend. And she'll sit that way now, but that was the first time I did that. I saw and felt her whole body just stiffen. And she looked at me as if to say, I'm willing to learn what you want me to learn, but I'm not going to let you push me in the ground. So a good trainer is going to have more than one way to do things. And again, I got impressed that this was not about force. This was to be about love. And had I forced her, the accomplishment would have been mine. But I wanted the accomplishment to be hers. So rather than put pressure on her hip joints and try to force her to sit, I stepped into her space. And you know, when somebody just gets a little too close to you, you create a little more space. So we're down here in, the, in, in Lake Bottom, in the fenced-in area of the running track. So I stepped in and she stepped back. I stepped in and she stepped back. And we did that about halfway across that field. And I knew she was going to back herself into a fence, and that was okay. Because I could use that fence at that point. To, to let her struggle with the fence rather than struggle with me. So she's hemmed in between the fence and me. She can't go backwards because there's the fence. She can't go forward because I'm standing there. And in order for her to have a sense of appropriate space, she had to bend her legs and sit. And, uh, and that's what she did. And so I stepped back from the fence and gave her a little more space and said, sit again. And she sat, and we did that two or three times, and so she figured it out. And the look on her face, it was really kind of funny, the look on her face when she figured out what I wanted her to do, it's like the light bulb went on, and it was like, I get it now. <laughs> and, and so we just had a great little game of learning to sit. But the importance of sitting is that if she, if she will not sit, she will not learn. Okay? And, every other, and the importance of that is that every other command I have to teach her has an element of sit to it. Psalm 46.10 says, Be still and know. Okay? We will not love what we do not know. And if we do not know God, if we do not sit with God on a daily basis, we will not know God. And we will not love what we do not know. And what, God, what the conviction that God brought on my heart when I was teaching her to sit was, Leonette, how much time are you sitting with me? And it's a little embarrassing because I'm not the world's greatest at having a daily devotion. But if we don't sit with Jesus, we won't learn who Jesus is. And, and we are not, there, there is such a thing as championship level obedience. We're not anywhere near that. But in order to train a champion, an obedience champion, it takes 20 minutes a day. That's not an undoable thing. 20 minutes a day. It's early April. What would your life look like December 31st if you took 20 minutes a day to sit with God, to learn to, who God is, to love God? You would not only be God's child, you would be God's champion. And listen, I don't, I'm not training her just so that I can boss her around or manipulate or control her. That's not at all what's happening here. I, am, I want to set her free to be a better version of who she is. And that is what Jesus Christ wants to do with us. He wants to set us free. 
to be his champions. And all it takes is 20 minutes a day. The next command I teach after we learn sit is that we learn down. We're told in um, 2 Kings 17.36 that it is the Lord who brings us out of bondage with a mighty power and an outstretched arm. And it is to Him we worship, that we must bow down and worship. And so, in order to teach down, again, we start with the sit position. Where are you? Can you do down? Will you down for me? We usually start with the sit. Please. And lifting the chin usually gets the rear end to go down a little bit. Good girl, thank you. And then down, thank you. Yes, you did that nicely. This position allows two things. It, first of all, it allows her just a comfortable way to relax. If she gets overly excited, you could put the dog in a down position and they can just calm themselves in that position. But it is also a position of respect. Dogs in their natural um, packs in the wild feral dogs, they have a leader. Um, and usually the way they get to be the leader is they kind of jump on the others and push them down a little bit. And that's how they establish their dominance. Dogs need somebody that they look up to and respect and admire. And so for a dog to have a good master means they're going to have a pretty amazing life. A good master is the be-all, end-all of a dog's life. You and I are not that different. We need somebody bigger than us, more powerful than us, that we look up to, that we admire, respect, and worship. So for us to have a good God, who loves us so much that He laid His life down for us. That is the be-all, end-all of our life, is to have that kind of master. After we learn come and sit and down, we can learn stay. In, uh, in Luke 8, 26-39, you read a story of the absolutely most messed up person you will ever know in your entire life. This man is so messed up, he's, he doesn't even have his own name. He is known by the number of demons that possess him. His name is Legion. And he meets Jesus on the shores of Galilee, on the Decapolis, and Jesus heals him. And by the time he, Jesus and the disciples can get back to the boat, this man has gotten himself clothed and gotten to the boat before Jesus and the disciples get back to the boat. And he is just ready to go. And Jesus looks at him and says, No, you cannot go with me. I need you to stay here and tell these people what I did for you. And the Decapolis is one of the most godless pagan areas there is. Sin City. And Jesus heals this man and leaves him there. Tells him to stay. And that man's ability to stay and tell those people what had happened to him was such an amazing witness that it converted that part of, of the world at that time. Now stay is a position of trust. And we're going to test her here in just a minute. Um, Mike, you got my meatloaf for me? Okay. See, you know, we talked about um, treat. Let's put it in this napkin right here.
And what I've got to find out is, will she love me enough to stay where I tell her to stay? Even though this meatloaf may very well be right under her nose. Okay? I'm not going to promise anything. She's not a perfect dog. I'm not a perfect master. But we're going to give her an opportunity here. Okay? Will you step back, please? Yes, she has. All right. I need you to stay. All right? I need you to love me more than you love the meatloaf. I'm going to turn my back and I'm going to walk away from you. And I need you to stay. I need her to love me more than the meatloaf. Jesus needs you to love Him more than whatever it is that's got your attention. And I know there's plenty of stuff in the world to get our attention. But Jesus needs us to love Him more than that. Do you love Him enough to stay where He has put you and not get distracted by what the world throws at you? That's a tough lesson to learn for some of us. Thank you. Thank you for loving me enough to stay away from the meatloaf. And because you did that so well, I will bless you with a bite of meatloaf. We'll get the rest in a minute. Okay? The last thing I want to talk to you about is the heal command. And this does not mean that she's going to cure you from all your infirmities. Paul tells us in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, that if we walk by the Spirit, we will not follow our sinful desires. Sasha's the first dog I've ever had that I required to know the heal command. But at the time I got her, I didn't know how to teach it. And some trainers say that it's best to teach the heal command first, but I won't get into all that. But again, I had to face the question of, Leonette, how well are you walking with me? Because in, And the heal command is a pretty complicated command because it means you go when I go, you stop when I stop, and you sit while, and wait until I get ready to go again. And so we'll take a moment and see if she'll do this. Will you heal, please? You'll see her come around to my left side. That is the healed sign. Thank you. Come on. You can stop. Good girl. Thank you. Let's walk. Heal. And let's heal the other way, please. Left side. Do it correctly. No, you're goofing off. Come on. Thank you. Very nicely done. Yes. The importance of heal is that if she can is that if she can walk with me, she can go wherever I go. You think about this in your own life. Are you willing to go wherever God goes? See, I don't know about you, but I like to haul off on my own ideas. And I expect God to keep up and bless me, thank you very much, while I'm about my own business. And I don't ever really, I have to make myself stop and ask, God, which direction are you going today? See, I want to do it backwards. I want to go off on my own. But that's not what the heal command is about. It's about going where God goes. And that can be very intimidating, but I'm going to tell you, the safest place this dog can be is by my side. The safest place you and I can be is by Jesus Christ's side. I want to leave you with just two closing thoughts. And the first one is this. A dog that rebels is in a cage, on a leash, or dead in the street. But a dog who has been inspired by love to honor and obey, that dog is a joy to itself 
and a joy to its master. Thank you for letting me share. Let me close with a, a prayer. Lord, we thank you for this time to just come and be with you. Lord, we pray you'd free us for joyful obedience. We ask this in your name. Amen.